Good evening. Welcome to this beautiful Wildwood Pavilion. Uh, thank you all for coming out. This is our second annual Starry Night concert. We hope to keep you dry, so we're going to start a couple minutes early. Um, there is some weather potentially on the way, so we'll try and get through everything on our program. What you see in front of you is a mixture of six-plus ensembles. Uh, we have four concert ensembles at, the, at Lake Orion High School, and there are members of each one of those from last year. There are even a, a few members of next year's high school band, and we actually have some members of the teaching faculty from Lake, uh, from Lake Orion Community Schools playing their instruments. And we've had three rehearsals with these guys together and perform, or they're gonna perform for you a program that I hope you'll really enjoy. Uh, so once again, we're gonna get started quickly. I would like to mention that there is a brand new this year, beautiful concession stand up there, and please don't hesitate in between pieces. Uh, as, we're, as I said, we're gonna try and move pretty quickly in between each one. But please don't hesitate to go up there and get something to, to munch on, something to drink. And uh, the, the boosters are selling some, the Lake Orient Band boosters are selling some really cool uh, wear, uh, spirit wear or, or shirts and, and jackets and other, other items that I think you might really enjoy. If you don't have a program, there are some up there at the concession stand as well. Uh, everything is listed in order on the program. And I have a bug on my glasses. That's not going to work. We'd like to start with one of John Williams' first new movie scores, uh, not very well known. Unfortunately, it's, you, can, you, can, uh, you can not hear why, because it's really great music, and you can hear some of his other, some of his later style come on. Uh, there's one theme that literally just sounds like it, it was just redone slightly, and you have the theme to some of the music from Jurassic Park. So hopefully you'll enjoy The Cowboys by John Williams. Thank you. 
turn the microphone off during the performance. Uh, John Philip Sousa is, without a doubt, the March King, one of the most important composers to all bands, all bands of this style. Uh, he composed hundreds of marches uh, for various reasons, but mostly for the United States Marine Corps Band. One of his earliest marches is one of the, one of the ones that was one of the first to come out. The Marines are in the process of reissuing with all sorts of errors re removed and easier to read parts than those tiny little ones that most of us remember playing in band when we were much younger. And they are in the process of reissuing all of the Sousa marches. And one of the ones that I really had, a, had an affinity for, and now we have these great authentic parts that are out, is one of his earliest ones. It dates from 1889, I believe, and it's called The Gladiator. scene is a guy named John Mackey. And John Mackey has written some things that uh, this band has played in the past. If you've been with us for a while, you might remember such pieces as Strange Humors, Xerxes, or one where we actually, it calls for us to take a trash can, metal trash can, and bang it into the ground. So you can understand that some of his music might be a little bit less, I guess, easy to listen to than others. That piece, by the way, was called Asphalt Cocktail which is a euphemism for skateboarding, hitting a rock, and eating asphalt, because you, okay, anyway. This one is quite different. This is a gorgeous piece, absolutely beautiful. It's called Sheltering Sky, and I picked it hoping it would be very appropriate for tonight, and hopefully it will stay appropriate until the performance is done. So this is John Mackey's Sheltering Sky.
Okay, from one of the newest composers after one of the most famous American composers to the most famous by a long shot Norwegian composer, Edvard Grieg. And he's well known for many themes in the Hall of the Mountain King, many other themes from the Pyrgian Suite. You would hear him, maybe not recognized by name, but you know them in, a, in, a, in an instant. This one is just as fun as some of those, probably not as well known. This is called The March of the Trolls. On the program are a number of people that are extremely important to thank. Uh, everyone from the exceptional administration of the Lake Orion Community Schools to our 
exceptional administration from the Corian High School, uh, our band boosters, our executive board there, and of course the, the executive board from the township. Uh, the township to be thanked so much for not only allowing us to use this, this facility, but actually having it. Uh, a year and a half ago, I had no idea this place existed. And the second I saw it, I said, we are gonna do an annual band concert there. And I'm so thankful to see so many of you here. I think it's, thank you. I think it's an exceptional opportunity for our community to hear these, these students. Uh, some will hear our, our students only on a football field. Some will hear, our, some will hear us in, in a small ensemble in the pit for the musical. Uh, some won't ever hear us. And so getting a chance to perform like this, and I'm hopeful that more and more we spread the word uh, that, that an evening like this is gonna exist every year. Um, we're definitely gonna be back here next year and uh, to, to, have, to have this chance to, to perform. Every single one of these students behind me is volunteer. Not a single one were told, you have to do this or anything of that nature. So for 80 students to give up more of their summer than some already have for marching band, I think it's tremendous. And to put together a program that is longer. <laughs> to put together a program that's longer than the ones they usually do, because we would have usually just been done. Uh, with our you know, third or fourth piece, and that would be when we move on to the next ensemble. So we still have quite a ways to go, and these guys wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, the next selection we performed at the, at the spring concert with the symphonic band, one of our four ensembles. And this is selections, pretty much every theme that you would recognize if you know the, the, the musical, The Sound of Music, one of the classic Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals. And uh, again, if you know just a few of these melodies, uh, that's great, you're gonna love it. This is a great arrangement of these, and hopefully you'll enjoy this, and uh, as much as the kids have enjoyed performing it. Kids and adults, sorry. So without any further ado, uh, Robert Russell Bennett's arrangement of the music of Rodgers and Hammerstein, the new selections from The Sound of Music.
dealing with the elements in many ways here. So please forgive the, the paper flying from one side of the stage to the other is not a special effect. It's not special for the performers, that's for sure. Uh, that is our music blowing from one side to the other. But we are doing our very best. Uh, we're going to take a quick tuning pitch here before we play this next one. Uh, Gustav Mahler is a, uh, technically I guess he would be called an Austrian composer, but if you would have asked him, he would have called himself a Bohemian composer that did not sit well with the Germans of the beginning of the 20th century, that's for darn sure. Uh, he redeveloped a symphony style, and his symphonies became huge. He used to say that when he wrote a symphony, he wrote the entire world. And this third symphony was bigger and broader than just about any symphony that had ever been written before. It was five movements long, and this is the, this is the final movement. Uh, it's a very truncated version of what we'll be performing for you, but the, the main elements are there. You might hear elements that were actually spun into a popular tune back in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely hear it. There's, there's really only one theme in the whole thing. As it builds toward the end, you get to hear some of the reason why he called it, and he, he named his movements of this, of this third symphony, What Nature Calls Me would be the first movement what the birds tell me, and this one was what love tells me, and you can hear it, it's some very, some very just passionate music, and it just builds to a, a tremendous conclusion. About four or five years ago, we did this as a conclusion of one of our spring concerts, and we combined both the symphonic band and the wind ensemble, and uh, to, those, to those players, I think to a person that was one of the most... Uh, Emotion. Emotional performances they'd ever had. done talking. And that's just comes back.
could say I had a really loud voice. I'll do my best. This next election is probably about, I don't know, maybe about six to 10 seconds of maybe 15 different Beatles tunes that you're gonna love and you're gonna recognize. And then there's another one, and then another one, and then another one. So hopefully you're a Beatles fan. We're gonna perform for you this great arrangement. Of, like I said, about 15 of their, some of their most famous hits. to help me with my volume-challenged voice. <laughs> that would have been a bad public speaker. So again, this is a whole bunch of great Beatles tunes smashed together. Hopefully you'll enjoy this great medley of some of the music of the Beatles.
really thrilled about this next selection uh, because it's the, I think it's the second time that I, since I've been a band director in 23 years that I will be able to perform a world premiere. And a world premiere is great, especially when it is one of your own students that wrote it. So from our bassoon section, our bassoon section, we have a very exceptional performer. We have a number of very exceptional performers in this section. Uh, Tiernan Makala has, per, has composed this, and I'll ask her to stand afterwards to make sure that she's not too, too set up before she performs. But this is it's a short selection. Um, she would have to explain what the title means. But Menateti was something that she, I, I, I often tell my students, if you've composed something and you've written parts for a band, We'll play it, even if it's just to hear it. You never know if we're going to perform it. We played this with the Wind Ensemble one day, and you can just see all the eyebrows go up. And like I said, it's a fairly short selection, uh, and hopefully there's a lot more to come of it, because there is some great, great beginning in this music. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. I, I find it to be really full of tremendous musical potential. And so, again, this is Menateti, written by one of our own bassoon players, Tiernan Makala. Okay, we've got one other march by John Philip Sousa, and we've already performed this one earlier this year. We're uh, not usually one to turn over the baton, but if you were at our spring concert, you saw one of, the, one of the most beloved people that works at Lake Orion High School, one of our campus monitors, Bill Waldrop, uh, who is a retired Marine, conduct this. Semper Fidelis uh, is, the, is considered the Marines, I don't want to say the Marines hymn, there's a, there's a different one for that but it's considered one of the most sacred pieces. Uh, and it's, and it's a, a march that means a lot to anyone who's served in the Marine Corps. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. Again, this is uh, John Philip Sousa, one of his more famous marches. And this is Semper Fidelis, and hope you enjoy it.
our next our next selection is uh, one that's very well known, but not in this not in this format. The Entertainer was a ragtime written by Scott Joplin, who was uh, probably the most well recognized name, easily the most well recognized name for composers of that genre, the, the ragtime, the very early jazz, very one of the first really American musics to come out, and one of the first styles of music that people all across the world said, that is an American sound. And uh, this composer, Scott Joplin, whose actual birth date is a question mark, wherever you go, uh, where, where he was born, they did not keep birth records, and he lived in the very late portion of the 19th century, very early portion of the 20th century, He's famous for not only this one, which some people have learned to be called The Sting because it was one of the main theme songs used in that movie, and also uh, such ones as the, the Maple Leaf Rag. So very, very well known. You'll know this in just a few notes. Uh, you could win very quickly on Name That Tune. Anybody, anyone remember Name That Tune? Okay, that was my favorite ever TV show. Love that, love that, love that show. Wish they'd bring it back. Uh, but nonetheless, you'll recognize this one in just a few notes. And you'll enjoy this. I'm sure a ton of these guys have enjoyed putting this together. We perform this at the senior concert. We do a concert every year at the end of the year where the seniors get a chance to perform a solo with the band accompaniment or we can perform one of their compositions. Well, hopefully we'll perform something by Tiernan when she's a senior. Um, or we could do a small ensemble or the students sometimes get a chance to conduct. And one of our flute players, Josh Baker, who graduated this last year, he got a chance to conduct this. Uh, he was going to play it on the piano, but I said, hey, how would you like to conduct? And he said, absolutely. And so we found a great band arrangement of it, and he hopped up, and these guys did a fantastic job performing it. So without any further ado, Scott Joplin's The Entertainer.
considering that it is starting to get a little bit darker. Um, I guess calling this concert Starry Night gives, you know, gives the impression that we would play along into the darkness, but it's going to be really tough to do at this time of year. Uh, plus, we're only supposed to go till 8.30. So. Uh, but Dusk was written by another new composer. He is pretty, still pretty young, named Stephen Bryant. And Stephen Bryant has some, similar to the John Mackey story, he has some music that is uh, like a basically a concerto for electric guitar and band. Uh, some things that are gonna really challenge the listener and some things that are just gorgeous. This one is one of his earlier works that became available for bands, uh, not for rental. There, I guess there are multiple ways that you can have a piece of music. One is someone in your band arranges it, someone in your band, uh, or excuse me, you, you go and purchase it, and then other music is only available by rental. And a lot of this guy's, this guy's music and a lot of his contemporaries are available only by rental. And this is one of the first that you could purchase, and you'll hear the reason why. It's really pretty, really gorgeous, and uh, if you can, in your mind, implant the, just close your eyes and think of what dusk would mean to you. And if you listen, I think you can hear as many different ideas of what dusk could mean as there are people here. And that's one of the great things that we get to do with music, especially when it doesn't have words. Words give the music a definite meaning, whereas a composer might have an idea of what the music sounds like to him or her, and then hopefully that music, that, that idea, that image gets into the mind of the listener. It's one of the real magics of music is we've got these little black dots that are representative representations of thoughts that a composer had. And those representations are written to go from maybe piano, which the last one was, and arranged for different instruments in the band, and then we, we interpret them. We play them, we try our best to do exactly the sounds that the composer wanted, but then we put a little bit of our own selves into it. And then we transfer that through the performance, through the mixture of all the sounds, we, we try and play, transplant that into your head. And music is all about feelings a lot of times. And so I would urge you with this piece not to watch necessarily, not to listen with expecting to hear something, but listen to to be able to experience. And a lot of times that's one of the best, best experiences that you're gonna get about music is try and tap into that emotion. If, if music that's, that's so pretty that can, it can actually bring you to tears, uh, if, if music is so energetic that it gets your blood pumping, it's, it's touching your emotions. And so I would hope that something that we performed, most of what we performed, but especially a selection like this, you're able to kind of disengage and say, yeah, I know that, and listen to it and really experience it. So I'd urge you to try that with Stephen Bryant's Dusk.
Our next selection is actually, I keep saying that, I need to come up with a new start phrase in the next selection. But, uh, so if you have any suggestions, I'll take it later. The, the next work that we're going to perform for you is very, very well known, probably not by its name so much, uh, but it's, the, the melody is very recognizable. Uh, the Russian Sailor's Dance is, taking from, is taken from an, uh, uh, excuse me, an operetta written by Reinhold Glier, very fairly actually obscure, other than this piece, obscure Russian composer. He has one other piece of music that, that most most people that really enjoy classical music would, would probably say they've, they've heard, and it's a horn concerto. He wrote a couple of symphonies, but in this selection, he's talk, it's, it's from, a, from a selection called the Red Poppy, and the Red Poppy is a ship filled with Russian sailors, and Russia is one of those unique countries that actually, on, on one side, it's, it's touching Europe. On the other side, it's touching the Orient. And so their music encompasses such a huge range from the traditional, you know, the, the, the traditional birthplaces of Western music that we listen to, the European side centers. It's very close to those on one end, but it's also very close to a completely different tonality that use completely different instruments based on completely different notes as, as the Oriental instruments. And so there's that if you listen to this entire work. However, this one tells just about some Russian sailors, and these Russian sailors are in all sorts of levels of frenzy, as they dance, as they compete each other to say, this is how I can do it, and you can, you can imagine the traditional Russian dance that they're all trying to do from the first person that, that does it very slowly and the next person that challenges him, and it goes on and on until it ends up just wildly finishing at the very end. My guess is you've heard, maybe you haven't re remembered, but my guess is you've heard this melody at some point. Even if you've seen the movie The Right Stuff, I was watching that three days ago, and and as, the, as the, they're depicting Sputnik going up, uh, they are showing the, the face of one of the Russian scientists and they're playing the main theme from this. So it's actually fairly well known. So hopefully you'll enjoy. This is a great band script or band transcription. And uh, it's, it's one that's been around for many years. So hopefully you'll enjoy Reinhold Glier's Russian Sailor's Dance. Thank you. Thank you. 
Are you next? There we go. There we go again. I can't learn from my own trying to come up with a new phrase. We will next perform music from a movie that, I gotta tell you, my wife and I wanted to go see this movie because the advertisements for The Incredibles looked, well, incredible. It looked like it was gonna be just a phenomenally funny and interesting movie, and it was okay. The music was fantastic. I love this music, okay? And it sounds, this, this music that we're, that we're gonna perform, I've tried to give these guys the idea of watching what the, what the music might be to a to a spy film from the 60s from the early 70s okay when i grew up i would watch the batman theme not the new batman but the old powell zop zacko batman theme and to give them that kind of you're not gonna you're certainly not gonna hear those melodies or anything that's supposed to just be like that but to give them that impression there's a little bit of jazzy in here we get to hear a an alto saxophone solo by mr eric crimmins which is going to Fantastic, and it's just it's just such energetic music. Um, we're actually going to end this the concert with three closers. That was the first one, so hopefully you'll really enjoy this. It's a lot of fun for the for the people. In fact, when I told them that the weather was rolling in, they said, "Can we move this one up earlier?" Because they really want to get to perform this. So this is the music from The Incredibles, written by Michael Giacchino. This is a very famous, actually this is done sometimes by just choirs, by bands, orchestras, and choirs, and sometimes by just bands. 
This is a very famous arrangement of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, written by, or excuse me, arranged by Peter Wilhowski. And uh, I certainly would like to thank you all for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed coming here. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing these guys. I'm I would be remiss if I didn't say I'm tremendously uh, lucky as a high school band director to get to work with students of this, uh, this level of energy. Again, their normal length of performance was done an hour ago, and these guys are still, are still chugging away. Uh, it's, it's fantastic, the, the willingness for them to give up three three-hour sessions in the middle of the day in summer when their friends are out on the boat, when their friends are wherever, and, and to, to come in and, and, and learn and, and perform more music. Uh, we very, I think the the music program in Lake Orion is just is just tremendously talented. And I don't want to I, I don't want to stand up here and make it seem like I have that much to do with it. It's middle school directors like Miss Jarris and Mr. Crimmins and Miss Klein. And I'm not going to make them stand. I'm not going to make them stand because. They, they do too much of that on their own. They do so much work. Every single one of these players is able to do what I, what I ask them to, is able to have that sort of, sort of ability because of not just the, the, the technical, and, and technical training that they get from, from these three that I just mentioned, but it's also the love for, for the craft that they get from these guys. And uh, I, I, I love music. I think it's one of the most important things that, that students get a chance to, to take part in. And I think it's one of the most important things for us to get to perform, because that's what music's about. It's, it's not about sitting in a band room every day playing the same thing for six weeks on end and then at once performing. It's getting a chance to perform and getting a chance to, to, to show you a little bit of us, to show you a little bit of, of not just music that we necessarily like, because. As a performer, you certainly get music that you love, certainly get music that you don't. And these guys are willing to swallow their, their dislike of a certain selection and absolutely put themselves into performing it at this level. And uh, uh, again, I'm just tremendously thankful. I'm thankful to you who are parents, who are, who are letting me work with your students. Uh, I'm just curious, is there anyone in the audience here tonight that is hearing a Lake Orient concert band uh, a Lake Orion sit-down band, if you will, for the very first time. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. If you have enjoyed this, again, we will be doing this again next year. I've already spoken with the township and they want us back on their, on their concerts in the park on another Tuesday night next summer. Um, I would like nothing better than to see side-to-side -side bodies here uh, people listening because I think personally and maybe I'm bragging and maybe I'm big-headed But I think these guys have something to offer that a lot of people don't realize And I would love to have more of the more of this world understand how talented student musicians can be and I love working with these guys So thank you so much for coming There will be one quick tuning pitch before we before we play the battle hymn of the Republic and uh, again Hopefully you've enjoyed this, and hopefully you'll tell your friends what a great experience it was, and uh, we've enjoyed it. Right? Oh, they're tired. They're gassed. We already had a two-hour rehearsal in the heat and then this performance. So, Okay, again, thank you so much for coming.
Again, and lastly, thank you so very much for coming out. It's been a pleasure, it's been a pleasure to perform with these guys. So thank you again, have a great evening, and we'll be done with your students shortly.